Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. It's been a long summer, and even though we haven't posted a video in quite a while, we've still been hard at work on the Model A. To make a long story short, after our last episode, we reassembled the chassis, put on the bench seat, and went to put the car in gear, and, well, things just didn't go as planned. We still had clutch drag. If you've been following our journey, you know that we've been battling this transmission for quite a while. We previously took it back as far as the pressure plate, installed new parts, made the proper adjustments, and we thought we'd solved our problems. Obviously, we hadn't. So off came the transmission again, and back to the drawing board we went. Using the Les Andrews Blue Book as a guide, we went through the extensive troubleshooting list, checking each and everything on it carefully to see if we missed anything. We even swapped out our old pressure plate and clutch disc, but it made no difference. Slowly but surely, we worked our way down the list and back from the pressure plate to the flywheel. Befuddled and frustrated, and almost at the end of the list, we pulled out George's old dial indicator and tested the offset on the flywheel. And, surprise, surprise, it was out of spec. It wasn't wildly out of spec, but rather just the width of a few conveniently missing flywheel shims. At this point, we decided we were done taking things on and off and that the whole flywheel just needed to be gone through and everything checked and made right before we put anything back together again. So that's the plan. That's what we're doing. So let's get to the shop and let's get to work. The flywheel is located behind the engine block and is attached to the frame by two motor mounts. To remove it, we needed to remove the starter from the bell housing. The starter is held in place by three bolts and lock washers. Once the starter was disconnected and out of the way, we removed the poorly done safety wire from the flywheel bolts. And using an 1116 socket, we removed the four flywheel bolts and the dowel retaining shim from the flywheel. The flywheel is not light, weighing in at over 60 pounds, so we had to be careful when we removed it. With the flywheel off the car, we moved to the workbench to inspect it. The pilot bearing seemed fine, but having gone to all this trouble, we decided we'd just go ahead and replace it with a new one that's sealed on both sides. The pilot bearing itself is pressed into the flywheel for the transmission shaft to go into. Using a little brake cleaner, we cleaned the surfaces of the flywheel. To remove the old pilot bearing, we used our press and a socket and we had it out in no time.
this. Next, we moved on to the ring gear. Using a stainless steel brush, George cleaned around the edge of the ring gear to remove any gunk that may have built up on it over time. The ring gear was more worn than we'd like, and with the flywheel off the car, now was the time to replace it if we were ever going to. With George and I both using hand torches, we heated the ring gear up to loosen it. We would have preferred to use the yellow rather than the blue bottle of propane, but it did the job. As we were heating it, we began tapping on the ring gear with a brass hammer, and within no time, the ring gear popped right off. Not wanting to take anything for granted, we wanted to make sure there was actually a flywheel housing gasket attached to the back of the block. We placed a jack under the back side of the engine to support it and began to loosen the housing from the motor mounts and the block. We unbolted the flywheel inspection plate and loosened it up just enough from the flywheel housing that we could see that there was a housing gasket between the housing and the back of the block. We were able to carefully remove the old gasket, inspect the mating surfaces to verify that they were clean and replace the gasket with a new one. Once the new gasket was on, we reattached the inspection plate, inserted our now notorious flywheel shims, tightened the flywheel bolts to 55 foot-pounds, and reattached the housing to the motor mounts. We checked the flywheel housing for alignment with our dial gauge to ensure the crankshaft end was square with the flywheel housing, and within the six thousandths of an inch maximum variation. We ended up needing to add 15 thousandths of an inch shim material under each ear of the throttle bracket, and that brought us down to only two thousandths of an inch variation, well within spec. Using safety wire pliers and some new stainless steel safety wire, we rewired the flywheel bolts in pairs. Since we were going to all this trouble with the flywheel, we made the decision to have the flywheel machined so that it was perfectly smooth and square. We took it to a local machine shop and they had it ready for pickup within a week. To install our new ring gear, we put the flywheel in the freezer for about a week, but 24 to 48 hours is probably sufficient to cool it down. Next, we attempted to heat up the new ring gear in the oven and got it as high as 500 degrees. This just didn't seem to be hot enough though, so we moved on to the grill method. Loading the flywheel into the bucket of the tractor, we pulled right up next to the grill. 
Placing the new ring gear into the grill, we heated it up to about 650 degrees and let it warm for about 30 minutes. We pulled the ring gear off the grill and in one quick motion, placed it, easy as can be, onto the flywheel. It went on like butter, with no extra effort needed. With the new ring gear on, we gave the flywheel 24 hours to cool down and normalize. We cleaned the flywheel again with a little brake cleaner and then pressed the new pilot bearing into place. The flywheel was ready for installation. Carefully placing the flywheel back on the two housing dowels, we torqued new flywheel bolts to 55 foot-pounds, and then safety wired them in place. Just to be thorough, we performed the flywheel wobble test with our dial indicator and everything checked out within spec, under the five thousandths of an inch of variation allowed. With the flywheel on the car and set correctly, we reinstalled the pressure plate, reattached the bell housing, and we look forward to putting things back together and trying to drive it one more time before the snow starts to fall this winter. All that, though, we'll have to wait for another day. Join us next time as we continue the restoration of this classic Ford Model A and start to put the pieces of this chassis back together again on the next episode of Epic Restorations.